If there's a shipyard that has made innovation and creativity its flagship, this is certainly Beneteau. Each generation of cruisers has distinctive traits that move it away from the previous models, often with breakthrough solutions, because the efforts of the shipyard and of the designers are all aimed towards one great goal, that of revolutionizing the way of living the boat and therefore also the sea. Today with the boat show we're on board the Oceanis 40.1 which replaces the 41 foot sister. Lots of innovations, many of which are impactful. So let's find out more about this sailing boat together with the dealer located here in Rome. The time has come to set sail. A well-tested team of architects designed the newborn in the Beneteau home and that would be Nauta Design that took care of the deck and interiors and Mark Lombard was responsible for the naval architecture. And it is precisely his work that leads us to the somewhat unusual aesthetic and practical design idea, that is, the adoption of double chine. That cuts the hull from stern to bow, becoming a redan, that being a step which diverts the flow of water and allowing to have a dry deck which, together with powerful hulls, guarantee better comfort when wind and sea rise. The integrated bow sprit, where it is possible to rig sails in Code Zero or Jenica, incorporates the bow plate of the well-spaced anchor to avoid that during the landing phases in the bays. It collides with the stem. The sideways measures 42 centimeters. They are not very wide, but they certainly allow for comfortable movement from stern to bow. But watch out for the lower shrouds. It is on the coach roof that we find the second big innovation of the Oceanis 40.1, that being the abandonment of the roll bar, which was the distinctive element of the previous models. Yet now they adopt the mainsail sheet fitted on the roof. In this case, we have the mainsail stay rope. It is a solution that, on one hand, leaves the cockpit clear of running rigging. On the other hand, it allows the owner to opt for more performing sails, such as the full batten, also benefiting from the position of the lower boom. This way, it is easier for a demanding sailor to work on the shape of the trim of the mainsail, managing fullness and twist. The cockpit, which is very large and equipped with two lockers under the seats, houses a spacious table for six people with an integrated life raft. The two folding seats are an interesting solution. The skipper can best adjust them according to his own style of sailing. The traditional pod is replaced by a handrail. The space for electronics is minimal, yet sufficient to install chart plotters and other displays, such as the bow thruster and chain counter. In addition to the forward sections, it is here, on the swim platform, that you can enjoy moments of pure relaxation, perhaps by reading a good book, like I'm doing now. Just think, this surface is three square meters. This is where you can see the great advantage of having such a pronounced chime, meaning the possibility to have forward a fourth cabin set up with a bunk bed, a solution which is ideal for charter companies. Keep in mind that we're on a 12 meter, the saloon also benefited because by exploiting the design of the vertical bulwarks, it was possible to expand the spaces, exploiting every available centimetre. The dinette and the U-shaped galley are comfortable and functional, and both areas adhere perfectly to the structure, leaving plenty of space to move around. The great customization, typical of the Oceanis, is reflected very well in the interiors, ranging from the owner's solution with two cabins and one head to the charter version with three or four cabins and two heads. And the starboard aft cabin has direct access to the head with separate shower stall. One of the most interesting aspects of the galley area is the well fridge, very large indeed. And on this boat we're testing today, we have a Yanmar 45 shaft horsepower that, at cruising speed, can reach 7 or 8 knots at 2,200 rpm.
Lo dicevamo prima, l'adozione dello spigolo porta As we said before, by adopting a pronounced chine, there are obvious advantages in life below deck, but also in navigation. The time has come to discover the special traits of the Oceanis 40.1. And on that note, let's hoist the sails. Oggi Roma ci accoglie con un vento da nord, nord-ovest, sui 10 nodi. L'imbarcazione, l'Oceanis 40.1, riesce a crearsi un'apparente... Today the waters of Rome welcome us with a wind from the north, northwest of around 10 knots. The Oceanis 40.1 cruiser manages to create an apparent wind of 13 knots and the developed speed is 6.5 knots. We are obviously talking about SOG, speed over ground. The feeling perceived is that of an extremely balanced boat, and once the sails have been precisely trimmed, the boat moves by itself as on a track. The interventions of the skipper, the helmsman, are minimal, because it is the boat by itself that follows its course. Un po' come quando si era sulle derive, se vi ricordate, i primi insegnamenti erano quelli di levare il timone e di navigare con la sola regolazione delle vele. Ecco, lo Senis 40 punti... A bit like when you're on a dinghy, in fact. The first lesson would be to take off the rudder blade and navigate with the sole trim of the sails. Here, the Oceanis 40.1 allows us just that. Once the sails are set, well, the boat takes us exactly where we want to go. In this version, the first line, navigation is very captivating. The two primary winches placed on either side of the double helms wheel, the German-style sheeting and the Genoa at 105% inclined in the package, allow us to sail on our own. La carena sotto lo spigolo. The hull under the double chine maintains sleeker, leaner and more performing lines. Il progetto dell'Oceanis 40.1 conferma la vocazione del cantiere francese nel confezionare imbarcazioni su misura per ogni esigenza, dall'armatore desideroso di trascorrere poche ore in mare senza troppi sforzi fino a... The Oceanis 40.1 project confirms the French shipyard's vocation in tailoring boats to match every need, from the owner wishing to spend a few hours at sea without too much effort, to the slightly more demanding sailor, looking for performance and some trims to be made. The work of Lombard and Nauta attracts the charter companies by obtaining a fourth cabin in a 12-meter boat. From any point you want to look at it, the Oceanis 40.1 project is more than a family cruiser. For us, it's a flexi-boat 